Good afternoon, my friends. This is Paul, and today I'm going to be re-reviewing Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, specifically the 3DS and Switch versions, because I originally reviewed the version that came out on the 3DS, but I wasn't able to capture footage of that. So here is the Switch version, although my thoughts aren't incredibly different, besides the vastly inferior controls and the additional DLC and support that it's received over the years. So let's start by talking about what's changed since I reviewed the 3DS version. Well, there's an entire special episode that was added as paid DLC. I already reviewed that in a separate video. There's also been a VR mode added, which I was actually able to test because I do have a Nintendo Labo VR kit. And I found that by far, this was the most amazing experience I've had yet in Captain Toad. While it's true that I did get incredibly sick and nauseous and had to run to the toilet after I was done, it's kind of that euphoric feeling you get when you ride a roller coaster. Sure, sometimes you feel awful after it, but you're like, that was the best kind of awful because it was so much fun. I imagine that's the reason why people who are addicted to drinks are totally okay with having a hangover because the drink tastes so good. Speculation aside, the VR mode takes four specific levels from the main game and tailors them so that you can move your actual head to turn the camera. This was incredible because unlike a lot of the VR stages in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, I was able to look in a full 360 degree direction ratio. I was even able to access a special menu exclusive to VR mode where I could see Toadette riding a minecart around the tracks and I could also look behind me and see a vast ocean and overall despite the stomach aches and nausea afterward it was a lot of fun. Now the graphics were extremely blurry and very low quality compared to other VR experiences I've had even the one at NCYC, which is a Catholic conference that doesn't even specialize in video games, did better than this. But I still think it was a wonderful addition, and playing the new levels, I might have said wow at least 30 times that night in the span of two minutes. And I just could not stop myself from saying, this is amazing, I love this. The other thing that's a major addition since launch is that now you can play every level with two players. So one person plays as Toad and the other as Toadette, not that there's really much difference apart from their hair and voice. Now I was not able to test this because I don't know of too many people that like Captain Toad as much as I do, but I do think it's a welcome addition, especially because I love it when games can incorporate multiplayer. Now let's talk about what's similar. So Captain Toad revolves around a series of diorama-like levels that play out in very short bursts, and your objective is to get Toad to the star, or in the case of the Mario Odyssey levels, the moon. Now you can pick up three hidden gems along the way, or you can complete a special mission if you want to really be a completionist. However, the problem with these special missions is that you don't know what they are until after you beat the level the first time. So. It may be cool if you accidentally beat the secret mission, but what if you don't? Then you have to play the whole level again just because the game didn't bother to tell you what it was that you're missing. At least the gems don't have that problem, as not only are they well in the open, but they also um, save after you collect them. So even if, say, you collect a gem and then lose a life right afterward, you don't have to recollect that gem. Kirby games take a lesson from this you really need to make your collectibles a lot more permanent. So the gems aren't really that much of a problem, and you don't even really have to go too out of your way to collect the collectibles. If you want, most of the levels can be beaten in one or two minutes if you know what to do. However, as you progress further, the game does get deceptively tough, as you have to rotate the camera in several odd angles. Thankfully, the camera controls work really well, and this was hardly ever a problem for me as once I learned how to zoom in and out by pressing the X button, it was really easy to get the angle that I wanted, even if sometimes it was hard to toss turnips at the enemies because my depth perception was a little bit off. Obviously, the Switch version doesn't have stereoscopic 3D like the 3DS version that I reviewed, so that could be a determining factor. 
However, this looks way better than the 3DS version, as the Wii U version was already gorgeous, and apparently they decided to make the Switch version slightly more gorgeous, although I don't really know how to tell the difference offhand. But I do think it's really cool that you can play in handheld mode, where you can use the touch screen to interact with a lot of the objects, just like how you use the stylus in the 3DS version. However, I do think the 3DS was a much more natural fit for these kinds of puzzles, as a lot of times the, the touch screen inclusions weren't terrible, but on the 3DS they took up an entire screen and the top screen was completely uncluttered so that you could see the view of the action. Whereas on the Switch, if say you have to turn a giant steering wheel to maneuver the stage, that takes up the entire screen. Now that could just be a nitpick because I don't like a whole lot of UI and HUDs in my games, so that could just be a me thing, and not everyone's going to have a problem with it. But where I think a lot of people will actually start having gripes is when you play the game on the TV, where you're forced to use the right Joy-Con as a pointer to maneuver the cursor. Now this cursor, no matter what you do, is always going to be on screen. While you technically can play with the Pro Controller, you can't aim the cursor with it, at least not the version I had because I have a third party version and it doesn't have a gyro support. But you can tell this was clearly made with the Wii U in mind and trying to convert it to Joy-Cons, it was just a pain in the neck, especially because as I tend to keep repeating over and over again, the Joy-Cons use gyro controls as opposed to an IR sensor like the Wii Remote did, so I had to constantly recalibrate. Then I didn't even know which button was the recalibration button, because in most video games, when you want to pause the action, you press the plus button, right? Well, the plus button is actually the recalibration button in this game, so I had to press the minus button to pause. It may seem like a little bit of nitpick, but when you've been playing games for as long as I have, it's something that's really hard to adjust to if you have never seen it come in. You can count how many times I've referenced Persona 5 in the comment section before I've actually played Persona 5. However, that being said, the quality of the game is still just as good at, as, if not slightly better than the 3DS version. It contains all of the same levels, and if you pay for the DLC, it contains even more. Now, these Odyssey levels are by far the highlight of the Captain Toad experience. They feature the same amazing music and backdrops as the Odyssey games, and I feel like they're really well converted. I think that the developers did the best they could to translate a platformer into a more puzzle-based platformer-esque, because, you know, Toad can't really jump. And I also really love how even in the 3DS version, they were able to get the original soundtracks for all of these levels from Odyssey, and especially the Cascade Kingdom is just beautiful both auditorily and visually. Now, if you're wondering, oh Paul, I've already played the Wii U version, and I don't want to have to play through all of Captain Toad all over again, nor do I want to buy the DLC to get new levels. Well, you'll be glad to know that the Odyssey levels can actually be accessed early if you scan one of the Super Mario Odyssey wedding amiibos. Now, if you don't have the wedding amiibos, unfortunately, you're out of luck. So I really don't know what to tell you if you don't have an amiibo, but I do think that's a nice little bonus for those who have invested. I could just be speaking because I'm an amiibo collector. So I'm really sorry for those of you that aren't. Now, the problem with Captain Toad that I think a lot of people will write off about it is that they'll say, one, it's way too easy. And two, I think they'll also say that it's too kiddy. Because for one, Toad has a really obnoxious high-pitched voice that says the same thing at the start of nearly every level. Also, the fact that he can't jump I think is going to make a lot of people think that this isn't a true Mario spin-off. However, I would argue that Captain Toad actually executes a lot of its level design even better than the Mario games, because for one, you don't have a timer. For two, you keep the collectibles that you get. And for three, the puzzle-like structure allows for you to take your time 
and really think about what you're going to do. I also think that the camera controls in this are perhaps, maybe besides Odyssey itself, the best that the Mario series has ever seen. And I kind of wish they could make more games like this. If Nintendo could experiment with experiment with more types of levels, like maybe if they included levels from Super Mario Sunshine and converted them to Captain Toad style, I think that'd be really cool, as, let me remind you, this is just a port of the Wii U version, so it contains all of the levels from that original game, but fans who are double dipping might be a little bit disappointed to hear that the four 3D World levels that were added, if you had Super Mario 3D World save data on your Wii U, have unfortunately been removed to be replaced by the Odyssey levels. Personally, I don't think that's too much of a downgrade because from what I've seen on YouTube, basically this, they just added a couple of ladders and pipes to existing 3D World levels that weren't designed with Captain Toad in mind, whereas these Odyssey levels were made from the ground up to accommodate the new version. Now you're, you might be wondering, well, if the Switch version has stuff like VR, two-player mode, and special episode, is the 3DS version even worth it? I personally would say absolutely. Like, the 3DS version is by far the definitive version, in my opinion, because it has better controls. The extra screen really helps the uh, touch segments work a lot better. There's stereoscopic 3D, and while it may not have as good a frame rate nor graphics, Overall, it feels like it's a more natural fit to a game that was designed with a touchpad in mind for the Wii U version. That being said, if you play the Switch version handheld, you should be almost as okay as you are on the 3DS, but if you plan on playing this primarily on the TV, then I just recommend getting the Wii U version instead, because really all that you're missing out on are the new Odyssey levels, and if you have the Amiibo, you can just unlock those right away, but you might as well just play them on the 3DS if it controls better anyway. So with that, that about wraps up my review. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or critiques, please let me know in the comment section down below. And until the next time, keep the faith, stay epic, God bless, and let's hope we can see a new Captain Toad eventually. Bye!